Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. Sitting with my best friend Tony. What's up, buddy? What's going on, homie? Nothing, man. Uh, excited about this year. We uh moving forward. We uh we're, we're heading into show season, and um, you know, if you talk to any of the uh any of the companies around the industry, they're all like uh, gearing up for a show season. Yeah, and we figure we just finished ours so uh not too long ago, and uh that uh that just kind of you know when you see people getting together and really kind of just enjoying the show, the experience, the togetherness the, the community vibe mm-hmm. just you know you you want more of it so yeah. you know in, in, in going to these shows you get those yeah yeah for sure i mean you know i was i was lucky enough to uh last month i went to the uh to the american beauty show in chicago and it was the first show since you know pre that word we never say um uh, it just felt like the community was back like it felt like a hair show again you know the community was there and the education was there and and, and all that stuff so dude i'm just I, i'm really excited um about this show season this year uh i can't wait to be at some of the some of the events i can't wait to uh our, my next one is premiere tony won't be making it with me because uh, he's going to iceland but uh, don't be too mad at him because he's going to iceland yeah i wish i was there just so i can watch you do the one chip challenge with jacob on stage Okay, so I think this is breaking news. I don't think Babylus has talked about it, but um, but Jacob Khan and I at two p.m. on Sunday are going to be on the Babylus stage, and we are going to endure. I think that's the best word. We're going to endure the one chip challenge. Um, it's the Pocky one chip challenge. If you haven't heard about it, uh, it's the world's hottest chip. Um, it sounds miserable to me, but uh, but 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 we'll be there on the Babylus stage doing it. And then um, I just talked to Jacob yesterday. We are going to run off and try to uh record a thirty minute podcast cast um afterwards but uh we'll, we'll see how that goes i'm not really looking forward to that either hopefully greg can put it on live so at least i can watch it somewhere right. well <laughs> yeah I, i've already told you that like my biggest fear is that i shit myself in front of thirty five thousand oh, no. hairdressers so you know i don't want to do that on stage but you know that's that's that that's the real challenge in the challenge mm, which, <laughs> although I, I don't wish, yeah i don't wish that upon you though but Oh man, that would be funny. But you would like, yeah, you don't wish it upon me, but you wouldn't, you know, it's, 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 it's my theory about the mammoths, you know, they might chuckle. I know. Right. They're de-extincting mammoths. Right. So I always said like, I don't know if I agree with like de-extincting mammoths, but I'm also the first one in line to see one when they come to our zoo. Right. Exactly. So, you know, it's kind of, that. I don't want it to happen to you, bro, but I'm, I'm going to be laughing and watching just in case it does. That's awesome. Hey, um, real quick. So our real quick. So, um, our guest today is Jerry Natuno and, uh, Jerry is the founder and the CEO of Schedulicity. And honestly, if you're listening in, and 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 just to be clear, we don't have a business relationship anymore. Um, but that doesn't that doesn't um that doesn't decrease our relationship. You know, I I I can't thank Jerry, I can't thank Schedulicity enough. Um, in in the bottom of my heart, I think that um I think the Schedulicity uh, helped us uh helped us grow our our brand, our business, and and, and uh, really allowed us the space to grow wings in many in more ways than and than just the podcast. Even in, even in the salon suite where we work, we use Schedulicity. We mm-hmm. use them every day. My client, it's funny. My client came in the other day and he goes, I don't know what I would do if I had to call the front desk anymore. He was like, you know, I'm at work. I can look at my phone, make my appointment. And literally, you know, he, he goes, he left his old barber just because I'm using schedule listening. Are you serious? I, I swear to God. So you're like stealing people because of schedule listening? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> that's so mobster. Right? Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. It, it is, you know, I, I uh, last week or a couple of weeks I got, uh, ago, I got to sit on a panel and, and one of the discussions was, you know, online booking. And, and, and as I was the only, um, I was the only sweet person on the panel. Everybody else was like, you know, traditional salon owners. 
And, and I, I, you know, I, I stood up for online booking because I don't know how we do it as suite owners without that. And we have a receptionist, but it just makes things so, so easy. You know, the, the thing is, and, and I think the first time we sat down with Jerry, he was telling us a stat, but something like 80% of the appointments are made after hours. Like that in itself is, is reason enough to, to, to have a, to have an online scheduler, but Hey, you know, what do I know? Yeah. And, and then not only does he make our life easier, I mean, Schedulicity, they truly care about the community. They really care about our industry. And that's what really drew us really, really close together. You know what I mean? When he approached us in LA back in 2018 uh, and started talking, we, we started fishing and, and just trying to see what Schedulicity was really about. And at the end of the day, he cared as much as we cared about this industry. And that's what really made this relationship so special. You know, what's interesting about that. And I think I've told Jerry this before. And if I haven't, then, you know, here, I'm going to you know, upset him, but I thought he was full of shit. You know, the first time <laughs> I sat down with him, the first time that I, we sat down with him and we sat down with him and Michael and they were telling us all these dreams and about what schedule city stood for and all that stuff. And to me, when we were taught, when he was talking to us, it sounded like words, but it didn't sound like, it didn't sound like it was possible, but right. I can tell you, you know, sitting here, you know, almost five years later that, that everything that, that he has set up to do and, and what, um, you know, hit through his business funnel is community and not just community, but like the hairdressing and the beauty community. And I've never seen anything but that, you know, from, from schedule city. Dude. It, even during in the middle of the pandemic, when we were shut down, uh, he and, and then we, even when we got back, knowing that how how a lot of hairdressers were struggling, I mean, as a company, they gave eight months of free subscription to their to their users, eight months without bringing any mo income in. You're making his CFO cringe right now. <laughs> yeah, but still, but that's but that's how much he, they cared about our community. You know right, what I mean? Exactly. And 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 I'll make it a little bit uh, more nuanced there. Jerry cared about that because Jerry made that call and Jerry made that happen. You know, I know I know that for a fact. So yeah. you know, should we bring him in? Let's do it's it. We're talking about him and he's sitting here staring. At me like that. <laughs> hey, Jerry, Jerry Natuno, welcome back, man. Welcome to your welcome back to your day off. Thank you. I'm really excited. First thing that comes to mind is how in the hell could it be five years ago that I met you? That's, right? That's insane, right? It's crazy. No, that it's is September the 2018, thing. right? I, I was it's like September, oh, October. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I hadn't thought about that. And just listening to you say it, I was like, holy crap, there's a lot of stuff happened since then. <laughs> yeah. Right. You ain't kidding. Yeah. You know, we talk about that weekend a lot, Jerry, um, and, you know, a, a little, I think we've talked about this on the podcast before, but if not, then, you know, here we'll talk about it now, is that um, Tony and I, we were completely self-financed at that point, meaning like we were financing this through our family's, you know, budget or, you know, yeah. bank accounts, and we were invited to do LA. We'd only been doing the podcast for 10 months. It was, it was the Modern Salon Digital Summit, and we had long conversations about pulling out of that event only mm -hmm. because we had to take four days off of work, uh, which, you know, we weren't bringing income in. It was going to cost us, you know, a few thousand dollars out of pocket, you know, so like round and round, it was going to be like a $10,000 weekend from like not yeah. working to, to money out of our, our, out of our budget. And the only reason we went was because we were invited by modern salon and certainly being a podcast, we wanted we wanted that modern salon attention and the conversations that we were having was, well, they invited us. And if we're ever going to get invited back to anything, by the way, we haven't been invited back to anything else that modern salons done. However, <laughs> however <laughs> the thought was that, 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 that if we ignored their invitation, we'd never get a second one. And that's the only reason we went that single handedly was the most important weekend. It was a sliding door moment for us, you know, because one, we got to meet you and, and two, we got to meet so, so many people that have been on the podcast since, um, yeah. that, and, you know, it was just, it was truly, truly a sliding door, uh, moment for us. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really funny that you bring that up because, um, you know, I went reluctantly to that event. Um, we, we, and, and it's, <laughs> it is really funny to hear you say it because, you know, we were invited, I was invited to speak at, at that thing, um, because it was about technology that's what the th whole th thing was. And so I was invited to be one of the speakers 
And, um, but we were looking at it and we were trying to decide where we wanted to spend money and, and so on. And, and it, I didn't really, it didn't look like anything that I thought was going to have a lot of necessarily return on investment for the money that it was costing us, you know, to send me and people there and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, cause it was relatively small and it was like the first one. Um, and we didn't know if there was going to be 20 people there or 20,000 people there. Um, and so Michael, um, you know, was a real, you know, he's the one who said, yeah, we should, you should really go and, and so on and so forth. And, and so I went, but it is interesting because we, both of us didn't want to go, but there we were and look what happened. Right. So, you know, that was an interesting event for me. I met a couple people at that event that I still speak to, uh, um, Lee Resnick, as an example, I met that, you know, day. Um, that, oh, what, what is that? Lee was there? Yeah, that's where I met him. Oh, Lee. that's crazy, because we didn't, yeah. I guess we met him through Jerry, right? Matter of fact, I met him moments before I laid eyes on the two of you for the very first time. Um, and so, yeah, because um, I, I met him. Um, and, and we got into this big, long conversation and he went one way and then I kind of, you know, um, I just started to stroll around and see what kind of trouble I could get into. And that's when I kind of went back down that hallway and I, and I ran into the, that big, you know, thing going on back there, which, which turned out to be you guys. <laughs> and I walked back. Where did you find trouble? <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, I saw like this whole crowd of people like mashed around this table and I was trying to, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not 6'11". Um, and so I'm like, what the hell, what the hell's going on in there? You know, and I kind of squeezed my way through the crowd and then lo and behold, these two dudes um, and, you know, it was, it was fascinating. And then, you know, the rest is history. I found myself transfixed with the conversation that you were having. Um, and you probably remember this, but it was Philip that you were talking with, mm -hmm. um, when I first met you, but yeah, he tends uh, to, he tends to be a crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but we've talked a million times about it. I mean, I, I was, I, 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 I stood there. I'd never seen you before. I never heard of him or seen him before or anybody, you know, that I was standing around. Um, but I was listening to what you guys were doing and, um, and just the, you know, the, just, you know, I could hear the passion in your voices and I loved the interaction between the two of you, which I later told you about, you know, I have a, I have a best friend who you've met. Um, you know, that I, I've known since we were in the fifth grade, still today, my my closest best friend. And I loved you guys' history and just the natural, you know, way that you guys communicate. Um, but I was really mostly drawn to just your, you know, real passion around um, creating awareness about this community that, that, that you're a part of and that Schedulicity is a part of. Um, you know, this is a this is a massive, massive community. You know, the, the hair industry obviously is a multi, multi, you know, I think a couple of years ago it was a $65 billion industry. But the truth of the matter is, you know, so obviously there's a lot of big companies out there and everybody's after the money. But at the end of the day, it's really a community of individual, you know, artists who are really passionate about what they do. Um, and, you know, at, at the street level, none of it would exist if it wasn't for the kinds of people that you are and the kinds of people that um, you you bring on this podcast. Um, and I think just bringing attention to, you know, who, who these individual people are and what makes this such a special industry is something that I, you know, am really drawn to. As you guys know, you know, I'm a lifelong musician, um, and I thought for most of my life that uh, that was going to be, you know, kind of the path that I followed before I kind of fell into entrepreneurship. Um, but I think, as I've mentioned a thousand times before, this is what really drew me to to the the this industry, this community, and you guys especially was just. I, I'm an artist as well, and I view you know all of the people in this community as as artists at heart. Um, and that comes with challenges. <laughs> it's not always, you oh, know, sure. easy. Um, which is one of the things that I started, you know, Schedulicity for was to help 
people that are passionate about this business become successful at what they do. Because as you guys know, um, just cutting hair sometimes doesn't guarantee that you're going to be successful in this business. You have to be good at a lot of things. You have to be good at, 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 at being a business person. You have to be good at managing your time. You have to be good at communicating with other people. You have to be good at marketing yourself, which is not natural for a lot of people. Um, and, you know, as you know, that's what Schedulicity was born from, you know, the idea of how how could we bring something together? How could we create something that literally every day, you know, helped make everybody in this business even better at what they do by allowing them, you know, to, to really concentrate on the things that they're good at and they're passionate about and then helping them with all the other things that are critical, but not necessarily as, as, as doesn't come as easy to everybody. That's one of the things I love about Schedulicity is that, you know, I love my uh, weekly newsletter from Travis that, uh, you know, it shares That's kind awesome. of point on what's happening. You know, you guys bring in like Nina, the Brett Sivas, you bring in people that uh, in our industry that that is going to empower and elevate your business. And, uh, yes. you know, and, and that's one of the things that, you know, and, and Schedulicity offers so many things, different templates, different so many things that to, to send out newsletters and, and appointment reminders. I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible what you guys do. You know, you know, I think because of the nature of our business, you know, we've been blessed to have tens of thousands uh, of, of hairdressers and, and, and people in the beauty industry who wake up every morning and rely on Schedulicity to help their, their business. But the, the byproduct of that is that we have a, 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 a just a bottomless well of, of knowledge um, because we've met people like you and, you know, we'll find that, you know, there's a, a hairdresser that lives in Tampa who we can see is like killing it. And we're able to reach out to these people and find out, oh, wow, they're doing some really unique stuff. And then it allows us, right, to share that. With, with with people, which is you know really that's the that's the key thing. I mean, no nothing, no no industry, no community survives in a vacuum. No, there's right. no there's no community in a vacuum. Right, and we've all met people in in every industry and in, in this industry who they want to be in a vacuum, you know. But but it doesn't work that way. The most successful things come from when you share what you know, when you share good ideas with other people, and because because no matter where we go or how far we go in our careers or our lives, um, we we've never gone too far that we still can't learn from other people. So. You know, I, I love the position that we have where we, you know, we, we have so many talented people that use Schedulicity all around the country, and we're in a constant search to find them and 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 learn about things. And Travis is fantastic, and um, he's sitting right on the other side of this wall. And, and, and so, Travis? <laughs> like, like and, uh, and, and, and he does a great job of really, like, you know, saying, wow, this this is something really incredible. We need to share this with with our whole community because everybody could could benefit from that and and so you know it's kind of kind of the mantra. That's really awesome. Yeah, I was saying we're, we're the same way. Corey, you know, he talks about it on the podcast all the time. I mean, we've helped so many other podcasts get started, and even if it puts uh, us out of you know the podcast world by elevating yeah. help other podcasts to help our community. Yeah with that we'll share whatever we have whatever we know to to elevate this industry uh if we can yeah a thousand percent and i believe i believe there's a need for it i believe that that you guys to this day are, are still doing something that nobody has done um and in a way that nobody has done it and listen uh you know as far as business uh relationships i'm not done with you yet <laughs> we're not done being done with but, but you know listen when i heard you guys you know at that uh, in LA that day, you know, when I went to you and said, how can we help? How can we, you know, help you help yourselves to, to grow this thing? Um, it was simply because again, uh, you know, I'm, I saw you as somebody who could help really elevate, you know, all the people around you. And the more people know, the more successful they are, the more that they appreciate, um, things like a podcast, things like Schedulicity that can make their day-to-day -day lives a little easier and, and more successful. And so, you know, that's what drew me to you guys originally was, again, just your passion to, to, 
to, to help the community and help everybody around you. Because, you know, I think to this day, five years later and 15 years from now, that's the one core thing that we will always share together is that, you know, we think about everything about, um, you know, how we can, how we can elevate everything ar around us. Because at the end of the day, we win by doing that. Um, and we've all seen what happens when it's all about, you know, elevating you and not thinking about the other people around you. Yeah, that's definitely true. Hey, Jerry, I'm going to take you back a little bit. I want to, I, I want to learn, and I don't know if we've ever really had this conversation, but like, how did you, like you mentioned that you were a musician and, and that, 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 that was your passion. And that's where you thought like your life was going to draw and stuff. Like mm -hmm. how did you, what was your, I have two questions. One is like, how did you, what was your transition from being a musician to into entrepreneurship? How did you find entrepreneurship originally? You know, that's a, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. And, you know, uh, my, I, I was blessed that I had some really amazing parents um, and they were really great at kind of um, teaching us to be uh, entrepreneurial and, and, and get to get out there and make things happen. And, and, you know, when I was really young, um, I, I was doing things to, <laughs> to make money. Um, I, uh, I, uh, when I was a young, young, young kid, I used to do little magic shows um, when I was like eight or nine and my dad would drive me around to birthday parties. And then I did, I, I mowed lawns and I had, a, you, know, you know, all kinds of things like that, to anything I could think of to, to you know, make money. Because I, I did learn early on that, it, you know, it never hurts to make a little bit of money. And, um, and the truth of the matter is, I think it was a lot because of my parents. When I was younger, um, I found that, you know, I had a knack for coming up with ideas and, 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 and making money. And um, so the entire time that I was, uh, I still am obviously a, a musician and perform and, and so on. But all that time, you know, I was doing things to creating little businesses and so on and so forth. And then obviously when I got older, um, I, I started to do some different things and I, and I created a couple of companies that went on to be very successful. And that's kind of, you know, how the transition. No, no, no not transition like that. Like, like, I guess like more like, as a as a human or or what, what was that what was and i don't want to use the word struggle but but i think we all have it like if you thought you were going to be like you know in nashville the rest of your life yeah. then you kind of had to transition into like not necessarily was it a hard transition to say you know like when you retire from the nfl you know we hear that or, or all the we were just talking about right before we got online like all these boxers who can't seem to hang the gloves up you know, Mike yeah. Tyson is still working out at 55 years old, like a champ, you know, yeah. so, so like, like, what was that transition like, you know, like emotionally and like, you know, what, what conversation? You know, yeah. it, it was, it was hard. Um, but, you know, it was an interesting time in my life where I was, I was, I was doing some things in business um, at the same time. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm, I was performing with artists that, you know, that, that's what they did. And very quickly, I was like the only one who like was doing other things and, you know, created a business and, you know, was working and, and doing different things. And I kind of found myself at a crossroads where I could have gone one way or the other. And I just, you know, at that time, I was kind of tired of playing six nights a week in a bar till two o'clock in the morning. And I was starting to see that a lot of the artists that I knew that were really successful, you know, were on their you know, many divorces and, you know, they, they, they weren't around their kids very much when their kids were little, you know, and I could start to see at that time that, oh, you know, that's not all perfect. You know, when I was 22, riding around in a van with five guys for 6,000 miles was really cool. At 32, it's not really as cool. <laughs> you know, no, I mean, you know, maybe if you're, uh, you know, if you achieve, you know, if you're John Mayer, it might still be cool. Um, but for most, it's a it's it's a hard, you know, it's kind of a hard path. And at the same time, a lot of exciting things were happening for me from uh, in business. And I was starting to make money. I was starting to do things that really made me happy. I was starting to, um, you know, create things. Um, and I found the same kind of creative outlet in, in business as I did as an artist, right, as a musician, because you know, certainly with Schedulicity as an example, you know, um, 
you know, now we're a, now we're a, you know, a company, you know, um, and we're worth a lot of money. We have a lot of people that use, that use Schedulicity. We're known all over, you know, the, the, the continent. Um, but really the most exciting time for this was when it was nothing but an idea, right? And I found this guy named Michael and he introduced me to Jane, you know, and all of a sudden we're sitting around a table deciding, figuring out how we could take over the world, you know, and that I found was the same kind of passion I felt as a musician writing a song or learning, you know, a solo for a song. Um, and, and I think that's where the artistry kind of blends. Wow. Yeah, I, I I get that because you know it, it's when he's saying that like I just remember us sitting down and having the conversations about you know starting the podcast and and that kind of stuff and like again like it's so funny because when you have these conversations like there is no there's end goals but there's no end vision you have no idea if it's going to be successful you have no idea if you're a fraud in this in these ideas or not you know so like I I very much relate with I, I very much relate with that um we should have had Michael in on our conversation though maybe we would uh, you know be in the the continent or something <laughs> just kidding um, that, that that that's pretty cool man and then uh, and and i think we talked about this last time we talked on the podcast is that one of my fondest memories and i'm sure it'll be one of my fondest memories when i'm sitting on my deathbed but was sitting in your living room and listening to you and philip wolf like jam like it was like <laughs> it was such a cool kind of like it was the epitome of cool you know one jerry plays any string instrument and he has every string instrument in the world in his house from a stand-up bass to a cello to a guitar to a, a mandolin to 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 a violin i mean like the the, the the guy's got talent but to watch you and philip jam was very cool and it was also very cool to watch Philip pick up an instrument that he's never ever played and give it a go. Like I was yeah. like, oh, that's the epitome of cool there. It's the epitome yeah. of cool when he when he started playing the stand-up bass and like he had never done it. Like, hey Jerry, show him a way around. Yeah. That was cool. Hey, that's how you that's how you get places. You gotta get after it. So my grandfather used to say all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, man. I think one of my memories, uh probably fondest memories is when Jerry had us out and he gave us his truck. To drive down to Yellowstone. Well, there's that too. Yeah, <laughs> that was yeah that probably was one of the most amazing days that I've had. Well, like that day was like, you know, like uh, what's it called a bucket list? Like, like, like uh, listening to Philip play in a living room. Like, as much as I enjoyed it, it wasn't a bucket list, right? But, but being able to borrow Jerry's truck into a you know drive 1300 miles <laughs> round trip or whatever it was, um, to to visit Yellowstone was definitely like. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, Jerry, you're responsible for that bucket list check. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate that. Well, that makes me happy. But um, yeah, I'm super excited to uh, to be back on the podcast. You know, you guys are, are are such an inspiration to me. And like I said, you know, my my goal and when I met you that first day was I thought to myself, how do I make more people see these guys, mm -hmm. right? Um, because again, I just feel like, uh, you know, you bring something really special to the community that, uh, that has been so, you know, wonderful to you. And I, and I love that whole attitude and, you know, you know, still today at Schedulicity, I mean, that's how we start off, you know, every single day, you know, and, um, you know, the last several years have, have not been easy as I'm sure, you know, everybody knows it's been a tough time in the whole, you know, industry. Um, I think it's great what you were saying where, you know, you were there at the show and it started to feel like the show again. Yeah. 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 It, it feels really, it feels really good to be, um, it, it felt really good um, at ABS. So, you know, congratulations to Mr. Frank Folco too. Cause uh, he, uh, he, he, when he took over ABS, man, it was like, it was in the middle of it all, you know, yeah. for him to be able to pull it off is, is, is pretty, is pretty amazing. So, yeah. I, I mean, you just mentioned that, you know, the last couple of years have been, have been tough. Like what's, what's going on with Jerry and Schedulicity moving forward? What, what's in the plan? Well, you know, um, the, the plan is um, bigger and better and more exciting things down down the road. You know, we, uh, you know, um, just to be totally, you know, honest, um, you know, uh, you know, COVID and everything was very difficult for us. You know, we lost millions of dollars during during COVID um, because, you know, as you mentioned, I made the decision literally in the week that this was starting to happen you know, that we needed to waive all of our, you know, fees. Um, you know, even at that time, there was no way to know that it would end up being 11 months of, a, of doing that. And, um, it, you know, we, we needed to do is the right thing to do it. I do do and I do it again 500 times in, in the future um, because, 
you know, again, I don't know how you you I don't know how you charge somebody for something that they that they can't even use. And then the other side of it is, you know, I knew it wouldn't last forever, and I wanted to make sure that 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 all of this community was healthy coming out of it. And so we did that. Um, but you know, it was a big drain on the company. We lost, you know, a lot of money, <laughs> millions and millions of uh, of dollars. Um, so we ran through a lot of capital, and then, you know, I think even uh, the uh, 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 maybe even more difficult was, you know, kind of coming out of of all of that was very interesting because. You know, although I think, you know, everything starts to is feeling normal, you know, in a lot of ways, um, I think there's still a little bit of a hangover, you know, lingering in, in some areas and, and still to this day, you know, for instance, we're still trying to figure out exactly what the long term effects of, of the pandemic are going to be on our business so we had to take a year to really dig back in and get the company back where it needed to be, back to profitability, all of those things. Because, um, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, you mentioned earlier, you know, how much you appreciate all the things that we've done as a, as a company, you know, to help this community. Well, we can't help anybody if we're not in business. And so, you know, number one was to make sure that our company gets through all of this in a healthy, thriving uh, way so that we're solid financially, we're solid as a company, so that we can continue to do all of the things um, that we've done in the past, you know, um, because we want to we want to do bigger and more things in the future. But it starts with having a, a good business, which is no different um, than every hairdresser that's waking up this morning to go into their work, right? Um, they're not going to be able to help people if they don't if they, if they don't create a, a solid, strong foundation for themselves. Um, and so that's really what the, the last year has been. Um, the great news is um, everything is fantastic. The company's right back where we needed to be. Um, I did some restructuring with my board, which has been absolutely incredible. The team here is absolutely incredible. Uh, like you were talking about Travis earlier, our CX team is still, you know, I think the greatest, you know, customer support and service of any industry out there in the country. And literally our meetings today right now still evolve, revolve around every decision that gets made around this company has to do with how we can help our community. What can we do to make it better? What can we do to make people, you know, one of the things we've been working on a lot is we have a, we have a feature in Schedulicity called Fill My Book which is basically um, something that you can use where um, we will help you fill empty spots you have in the schedule, um, which, is, which is really key, right? Because keep in mind, you know, my hairstylist um, has been cutting my hair for like eight or nine years. I mean, you, you can't get an appointment with her. She's, you know, if, if, you're, if you're a woman trying to make an appointment for a cut in color, she's two months out you know, uh, to get an appointment with. But but how about all the ones who are not? How about all the young, you know, hairdressers coming into the business that want desperately to be successful, but but they need to get somebody in that chair, right? So we want, you know, for, for me, Schedulicity has always been much more than just a booking app. Um, booking is the heart of it because, well, anytime that you're providing a service, your whole entire business's backbone is your schedule. Right. So anything that you can do to make that easier helps. But well, we wanted Schedulicity to literally be to to kind of take, you know, you and clone you into five different experts, an expert in marketing, an expert in communicating, right, an expert uh, in managing your time and an expert in increasing your revenue. Right. And that's what we wanted Schedulicity to be. So we're really concentrating right now on things that we can do to help people to be more successful, to make more revenue. Right. So they can continue to make their business better and expand and learn new things and and all of those things. So we've been doing a lot of work on Fill My Book, and we've seen a lot of huge things happening in the last couple of months where we're seeing more and more businesses start to use it. And then they start to use it and they're like, oh, my gosh, I filled three of my my vacant appointments this week. And then once again, you know, that's what we get really excited about because anytime that we can make Schedulicity better at helping our, our customers, our businesses, our community better, it comes back to us. Uh, you know, sure. I, I love it. Does she, does your hairdresser, does she use Schedulicity? Oh yeah, absolutely. 
Was, so she, the, was she the first one? Uh, um, she was one of the very first ones. So look, um, she, she's booked two or three months out in advance, right? So yeah. Jerry gets online. Uh, oh, man, she's booked two or three months. Hey, Travis, can you cancel one of her? <laughs> so uh, I, I need to come in at one o'clock on Friday. <laughs> Her one o'clock accidentally gets removed and Jerry's name pops up. <laughs> well, I, I will say it's blasphemy for me to even to speak this out loud, but I will text her to let her know that I have <laughs> I need to get in. Um, but yeah, she's a she's been on schedulicity since the very beginning. She's kind of a guinea pig. Anytime that that we're doing something new, you know, um, she gets to be one of the first people to, you know, to see it. Um, her name is so, <laughs> hey, yeah. Jer that is awesome. hey Jer with so much talk going on and we just did a whole podcast on it yesterday and it's come up a couple of times on the podcast like the entire universe right now is talking about AI Have is Schedulicity are, are you guys dabbling in that are you seeing like that it's going to be so that there's going to be some use for um, not just for Schedulicity but um, but for well I'll put it back on Schedulicity it, are you guys dabbling in that world and, and what uses do you see AI happening for for Schedulicity you know I think there's a lot of ways I mean you know I'm 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 kind of in the camp where I'm not really sure about what to think about all that I do have concerns you know about about what could happen with an unadulterated you know kind of you know AI so I you know I I do see some of the warnings that are coming out that potentially you know that I think should definitely be people should be thinking about but I do think that there's a lot of uses. I'll give you an example. So we're looking at ways, as you know, we have um, absolutely uh, remarkable customer service. Um, at Schedulicity, it's our rock stars. Everybody in the country knows the Schedulicity rock stars who we're very proud of. But for instance, we figured that that there could be ways there that, that, that we can help, right? Because we don't ever want to, we, we, we will, we will never not have a rock star that you can talk to, right? I, but as we get bigger, there's a lot of things that we could help people with where they wouldn't need that. And AI, we're dabbling in some things where we could use AI to help with that so that you can, you can very quickly speak to one of the rock stars. But if you just have a quick little question that, they, that you don't have to talk to somebody with, that could be a potential use as an example. Um, there are probably things around marketing that we could use that would help a little bit, um, not in terms of replacing the marketing um, team or the things that we do in marketing, but just things that could enhance some of the things that we're doing. So I think um, probably like most tech companies, we're, we're dabbling and looking into if, you know, or if not, um, there could be things that we could use. I'll tell you how I've been using it and I don't know, you can do with it what you will, but, um, but I, um, I, I did my own bio with it. So I, uh, you know, I, I use jet chat GPT. I always got to slow down when I say that because I get all tongue, tongue tied, but, um, but I just, I said, Hey, chat GPT act as my PR person and help me write a bio. And then it asked me like 10 questions. And then I was able to do, you know, I was able to, I was able to answer the questions very easily. And then it, it just, it kind of made it sexy. Right. It, it used the yeah. and stuff like sure. that. So I I was thinking like like and I, I use schedulicity email marketing um quite a bit or not, yeah. not quite a bit, but I use email marketing, you know, to to chat with my with my clientele. I thought that it'd be interesting if if it was embedded in there and that's what we're looking at. And say, hey, can you help me put together, you know, like a marketing thing or or hey, I'm gonna be off for vacation, you know, can you, you know, just kind of walk me through it? Because what yeah. I found is that a lot of times I know what I want to talk about, I just don't know how to make it sexy. You yeah. know, and, and then if it could if it could help me kind of like if it could do the work to make it sexy, that would be. Yeah, that would I, I think that's a great idea. And that's one of the things that we have been looking at is how we can incorporate it into the app to, again, just make little things easier, you know, for, for people. Because, you know, right now, I mean, we have a lot of things that schedulicity that are set and forget. So you can set something up and never have to worry about it again. You know, you could do that. You could use it to say, you know, uh, every month I'm going to send out a newsletter to all my customers and tell them about these kinds of things. And, 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 and it could help you with that. There's a lot of different things. So it's new. Um, and of course, everybody's trying to figure different things out. But certainly we're looking at ways that it can make us more efficient and then ways that we could pass 
on to our to our businesses um, things that would make their day to day lives more efficient as well. As a business, does it does it? Because I assume that scheduling city wouldn't create the AI, so you'd have to go through some third party thing. As a business, does that like like for me? I use Chat GPT for free. Like, does it cost the business to kind of use that, or are we still too early to tell? Still too early to tell. You know, it's it's it, the technology is so new right now that, like most technologies that we're using in our lives today, at very at first, um, there isn't a really clear understanding as to how it will be monetized. Mm -hmm. Right? I can tell you, it will be. Uh, right? I can tell you that too. But, but you know, it's very early on in that technology, and I think you know that's what's going on is it's kind of rampant. But but I think it, it's rampant in the sense that that you know the the people behind it are trying to figure out how all this essentially is going to you know come home to roost and how it can be monetized yeah for sure that uh i made the joke yesterday and i think it's accurate like right now like when it comes to it would like when it comes to ai we're like it's like us when we used to post food pictures <laughs> you know yeah. like that was the beginning that was the infancy of uh, of, what, yeah. of what you know social was and then you know now we know what it is you know yeah. uh, and interesting, man. I'm, I'm I'm really I'm excited about the possibilities of AI, but that doesn't mean that there's not hesitation there, right? Like, like I certainly understand the hesitation, and you know, um, look at Facebook, look at Instagram, look at how it's evolved and how, like, yeah. you know, what it, what what we thought we were getting into, it, it's kind of gotten you know bigger and you know honestly grosser and uglier in, in the process too. Um, about it. You know, it falls into the camp of things that we're looking at to to create. A better experience, right? Yeah. A matter of fact, one of the we're getting ready. We're three months away from launching, um, um, kind of Schedulicity Pay two two the next you know version, um, which um, is something we're probably the most excited about. We're about to take the payment side of the business to a whole new level uh, of experience on for you, right? Um, and we're super excited about that because, you know, again, we look at every single day you get up and you go to, to the salon and, and you hit it and you're making a living, right? And you're providing for your family, you're doing what you do. We're, we try and look at what are the, what are the pillars of that business that are key, right? Because not everything is. But it's kind of what I said before, right? You have to be great at communicating. You have to be great at managing your schedule. You have to be great at, at, at business efficiencies, and you have to be great at, at collecting money, right? All of these things and marketing, these like four pillars that, that are absolutely critical for any hairdresser to be successful, right? And you know that one of them, you know, the interesting thing is what I didn't say is cutting hair. <laughs> right <laughs> because 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 the, because and the reason i say that is not that that you can't that you that not that you don't have to be obviously incredible at at, at the craft but my point is if i've learned, learned one thing as an entrepreneur at, at, and as a successful businessman is that a, a, a mediocre you know um hairstylist who's fantastic at business is going to crush a remarkably talented hairdresser who's not great at, at, at business. That, that, that makes total sense. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Every time. And so um, I think that, that, you know, certainly my hairstylist is, is, is remarkable at what she, at what she does as you guys are. But the point I'm trying to make is that alone will not make you successful. That alone will not make you, you know, I heard one time I was at the headquarters of Cosmoprof um, talking w about them with a deal that we were working on with them. This was years ago, and and I and and I happened to be sitting through their 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 meeting, and I was just a part of their meeting. So Michael and I were listening to while them while they were addressing internal subjects. And one of the things they were talking about was they were saying one out of three new hairdressers coming into the business is in the business two years from from now. One out of three. I can tell you right now, that's not because they don't know how to cut hair. Right. That's because they didn't know how to build a business. They didn't know how to create a business. And without that kind of foundation, the, the rest of it doesn't, doesn't matter. 
Um, and, you know, that's something that, you know, uh, the reason that we've evolved, you know, you brought up uh, Travis and, and, and the, the things that we send out to our, to, to, to our business to help them learn um, all the time. It's never ending. That goes way back to what I'm talking about, where we learned right in the beginning, right? The, the better we can make them at understanding how to make their business successful, the more they're going to be successful, the happier they're going to be, and the longer their career is going to be. Mm. Can so you... these are the things that we these are the things that we spend our time on every day working on. Can you talk about some of the the new things with uh, Schedulicity Pay 2.0, or is it too early to? to it's a to little up? early, um, but what we're working on is just some things to make the whole experience even better. As you know, we launched a uh, literally industry changing thing called Norm, which is just peer to peer. You know, uh, your client doesn't even need to have a wallet or a purse at their appointment anymore, right? Um, and we launched that, you know, during the the the, the pandemic. Um, and so we're getting to ready to make that a household name in the hair, you know, industry again, because it just makes the whole experience of, you know, if you talk to, to, to people every day that, that are doing what you guys do, one of the things that we learned is still to this day, one of the, one of the most awkward points of any of, of, of that business is collecting the money. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know what? Honestly, when I went from a salon to a salon suite, that mm -hmm. was the biggest like, oh, OK, like it, it, that was the biggest. Yeah. Like, we were talking about transition from like the musician. Yeah. To, that was the biggest kind of transition about yeah. you know, getting my own ego, my own insecurity, my own imposter syndrome yeah. under control. And Didn't now you're know? just like, now I'm you're just. Like, yeah. yeah. Now you're just saying, OK, here, tip me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How oh. much are you going to oh. tip me? <laughs> <laughs> so bad. That is so bad. You know what, though? That should be like a marketing thing that you guys do. Like it makes yeah. <laughs> that conversation like, no, for real. Like it makes that conversation because it honestly was probably the number one thing of like, you know, because every hour you had to make that hard swallow and ask for money, you know, when you've been working in a salon. But, but well, we, you know, we've you guys have made a great process. We've created this whole process with Norm where not only do you not have to ask, but it prompts the your 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 client to tip you and really high. You know, we we did some studies internally, and maybe I told you this in the past or not. But you know, the people using um, our payment norm, our payment solution, the average tip was up fifteen percent. Wow, mm, that's awesome. And before and all the time, where there's no weird awkwardness in 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 doing it. Um, but that's a perfect example of what I'm saying. Like, it's very critical, right, to anybody in this business at the end of the year. You know, these tips are a very, very important part uh, of your of your income. And so, again, you know, it's always been the focus of what we do here is like those little things. Like, how can we make that experience better for the client, better for the hairdresser, and everybody wins? And And, and we can honestly vouch for that because we like again we use schedulicity every day and it it is exactly what you say it is yeah yeah well, yeah it's been, well, it's been it starts time. it starts with as i said you know just really trying to rally around you know what we can do you know i mean i you know uh, i you know as you know we've had some very um kind of candid conversations in the past. And, you know, the struggle always is that when you get bigger as a company and you get more successful as a company, you're beholden to more people, board of directors and shareholders and things. And, and I think that's why you see a lot of companies in the world eventually get to a point where all of a sudden they're not what you, what they used to be, right? And that's because because it becomes a drive for money. It becomes a drive for, you know, what, what, what's creating value for shareholders and, and things of that nature, which is very important as well. But I think businesses start to move backwards when they lose sight of what is the most important, you know, critical, you know, issue. Uh, and I've had to make hard, hard decisions in the past that weren't necessarily the best thing for our business, but it was the best thing for our customers. And the idea was if we made that investment in our customers, that in the, in the long run, it would come back to help Schedulicity continue to be a strong, you know, company moving forward. And, you know, 
I try to come in here every day and keep this company and our staff, um, uh, because as you know, everybody in this company cares dearly about what we do and the people that we do it for. And, you know, I feel like the best way that we'll continue to be successful and the best, best way that five years from now we'll be able to help people in this community thrive and be successful is by creating a su successful company as well. And so, you know, again, that's kind of what we've been working on over the last year or so. Um, and we feel uh, I'm as encouraged about where things are right now as, as, as they've ever been. I think uh, this entire industry, meaning the hair industries, has had some struggles and had to go through some tough times. But I think coming out of it, it's, it's going to make everybody more successful. It's going to make everybody, um, you know, sometimes people have to go through hard times in order to really learn about what's important and where your energy should be put. And I think we're seeing that. I think even the big companies out there, you know, um, the the Cosmo Profs and the you know the the big biggies at the at the shows. I think even they're learning that this these things are not about. Um, you know, you know, my whole thing with schedule is the our whole thing. The reason that you and I met, we met that day and, and, and we bonded was for us, this is about people. This is about, this is about experiences. This is about, you know, uh, uh, um, living and absorbing, you know, uh, things around you. Right. And, and, and I think the hair industry got away from that. You know, some of the shows that I was going to before that, all of a sudden it was just loud music and fireworks. Right. You know, I'd go onto those the floor of those big shows, and it sounded like eight rock concerts going on at once, and and people are just walking around with a bag to see how much free shit they can get and, and go home, right? And I don't know that to me, that's not what it, what it was about. And I think I think if there was a positive from from all this, is that I think people are are realizing, you know what, that's not what it's all about. It's about bringing people together, right? Bringing people together allowing them to share knowledge with each other, right? So in, instead of just going home with a, pa a bag of free shit that you got, um, walking around the, the, the floor, um, what did you take back with you that's going to make you better on Tuesday? Right. Right. And that's how I want Schedulicity to approach the things that we do. That's how you guys think about, you know, your podcast and all the things that you do. Um, and I think the, the the more the industry realizes that, the, 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 the more successful the industry will be. And I think uh, from what we've talked about and some of the people I've spoken to, like Elizabeth and Lori Crete, and I think I think people are starting to get it. Um, and, and I think a, a large part of it is because of people like you who have spearheaded that. Uh, and, and, I, and I'd like to think Schedulicity as well. That's awesome. Absolutely. Jerry, thank you so much for uh, spending your uh, morning with us. It's our afternoon, but your morning. <laughs> thank, <laughs> well, thanks for hanging out. I believe it's been an hour. I know, dude. That it's like crazy. that flew by. It, it's like, well, it's like, you know, when we got to dinner and stuff, you know, we just we just get to chat up and stuff. I love that. That's what I like. you know, honestly, that's what I love about this like long format, you know, you know, podcast space is that we can just have conversation. It doesn't have to be anything but that, you know, we we'd be having the same conversation, whether we were, uh, you know, sitting at a bar or something anyways, you know, it's true. so um, we, so uh, we love you guys. And I appreciate very much the opportunity to uh, to talk with you guys today and uh, exciting things coming down, not the least of which is a an appearance in Montana. From the hair to street boys oh they, they can't oh, handle gosh. us they can't handle yeah. us jerry we will keep you in the loop on all the exciting things going on and um as always we will continue to do everything we can for this community and especially you guys because uh what you bring to this uh community and this industry um is 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 uh is is, is irreplaceable um and i hope your your voice just gets stronger and louder no, we uh, appreciate that. Thank you very, very much. We certainly love you guys. Yeah, we certainly right. do. Mr. Jerry Natuno, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Distry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.